Okay, question number 10 from the October 2019 International A-Level paper. Here we have a sketch of a part of a curve with equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals 2x plus 5 times x minus 3 squared. And we've got to deduce the values of x for which f of x is less than or equal to 0. So first of all, if you want to find the values where the graph is less than or equal to 0, that means basically where does it hit the x-axis and when is it below the x-axis? It's equal to 0, f of x is equal to 0, when y is equal to 0. Okay, because this is a graph of y equals f of x. So if f, is, f of x equals 0, that means y equals 0. y equals 0 is the x-axis. So the question is telling us to find the values of x for which the graph is below y equals 0 or equal to y equals 0. So first of all, we've got to find the values where it is actually equal to y equals 0. Where does it hit the x-axis? Now it hits the x-axis when f of x is equal to 0, as we said. So that's when 2x plus 5 times x minus 3 squared equals 0. So that's when x is equal to minus 5 over 2, which is minus 2.5, and when x is equal to 3. Okay, so obviously that's this point here and this point here, minus 2.5. Of course, we can see that x minus 3 is a squared factor, therefore it's a repeated root, so it doesn't cut through, it touches at 3. So it doesn't go below it, but it touches at 3. So we can say that f of x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, it's equal to 0 when x is equal to 3. And when x is less than 2.5, less than or equal to minus 2.5, okay, this curve will be below the x-axis. It will be above the x-axis, okay, when x is between minus 2.5 up to 3, but it's below the x-axis when x is less than minus 2.5. Okay, so when x is less than or equal to minus 2.5, that's when this curve will be on the x-axis and below it. It's on the x-axis exactly at minus 2.5 and below it when x is less than 2.5. So these are the this is these are the solutions you have to write both of these down. A lot of people would have left out this first one here. Okay, you think it's just less than it's actually equal to zero at this point here. Okay, part B it says the curve crosses the y-axis at the point P as shown. Okay, so they've told us now to expand f of x to the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d and then okay let's just do that first expand f of x to this form first so we've got to take this we've got 2x plus 5 times x minus 3 squared now x minus 3 squared is x squared minus 6x plus 9 so i need to expand this you're going to have 2x times x squared which is 2x cubed 2x times minus 6x which is minus 12x squared 2x times plus 9 which is plus 18x so we've finished with the 2x now the 5 times x squared is plus 5x squared and the 5 times a minus 6x is minus 30x and the 5 times the 9 is plus 45 so we can say that f of x is equal to 2x cubed, let's combine the x squared terms, you've got minus 12x squared plus 5x squared, which is minus 7x squared, and you've got plus 18x and minus 30x, which is minus 12x, and you've got plus 45. So there's the answer for part B. Um, and then it says, hence or otherwise, find the coordinates of P. Now P, remember, is when it hits the x-axis, uh, sorry, it hits the y-axis. Okay, so at P, we can say at P, we can say that x equals 0. So if you put 0 into the function here, we can, we'll see all of these will disappear and you're left with 45. Okay, so therefore the coordinates of P are 0 for x and 45 for y. That, those are the coordinates of P. Okay, um, it says or otherwise, otherwise would be basically putting x equals 0 into here. Which you, in which case you will get in this bracket 5 and in this bracket 9, because minus 3 squared is 9, 9 times 5 is 45. That's the otherwise way. Hence is using what we just did. Okay, then part 2 says find the gradient of the curve at P. Now, of course, it's easy for us to find the gradient of the curve at P because we need to differentiate this function. Okay, if we differentiate this function, you're going to get f 
dash of x, that's the differential. When we differentiate a function, you get the gradient function. So we need to find the gradient when x equals 0 on the y-axis. So first of all, we need to find the gradient function. So if we differentiate this, you're going to get 3 times 2, which is 6, times x squared, minus 14x, and minus 12. So therefore, we can see when we put x equals 0 into here, if you put 0 into the gradient function, you're going to get 0 minus 14 minus 12. So therefore, we can say the gradient, the gradient at p is equal to minus 12. Okay, so there we have the answers to C part 1 and part 2. Okay, now we're going to go on to part D. Okay, part D. All right. It tells us that uh, the curve with the equation y equals f of x is translated two units in the positive x direction to a curve with y equals gx. So we know g of x is translated two units in the positive direction. So it's g of x is equal to f of x minus 2. This represents the translation of 2 in the positive um, x direction. Okay, so... Basically, we've got to find what g of x is, giving you an answer in simplified, factorized form. So, we'll use the form of f of x like this in order to deal with this problem, because g of x will be too complicated to factorize again. So, uh, because f of x, sorry, the way when we expanded it, would be a bit complicated to <coughs> factorize again. This is already factorized, so it's easy for us to deal with this form. So, let, basically, what does g of x mean g of x is f of x minus 2. Why is it x, f of x minus 2? Because g of x represents the function f of x with it being translated two units in the positive x direction. So it's f of x minus 2. Okay, that's when it's inside the function. If you put a minus there, it means it's going to be translated to the right, positive x direction. Now, so basically what it means is here, we have to take the function f of x and replace the x with x minus 2. So instead of 2x, I'm going to put 2 times x minus 2. So I've got 2 times x minus 2 plus 5. And instead of this x here, I'm going to replace the x with x minus 2. So I'll have x minus 2, and then I'll have my minus 3 and squared. So I want to leave it in factorized form. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write this as 2x minus 4 plus 5. And here I have x minus 5 squared. So that's going to give me 2x plus 1 times x minus 5 squared. And that's the answer in simplified factorized form. So that's part 1. And then part 2 says, hence state the y-intercept of the curve with the equation y equal g of x. So we know that our g of x is equal to 2x plus 1 times x minus 5 squared and the y-intercept is when x equals 0 when x equals 0 so g0 is equal to that would be 1 times minus 5 squared which gives you 1 times 25 which is 25 so therefore the y-intercept is equal to 25 and there we have the answers for part D and that's question number 10 completed. Okay, one question left now.